rotate that nozzle for the last coat and this wing will be all finished. It takes about 45 minutes from start to finish so it's uh, fairly it's a fairly quick uh, painting method to put on. Okay, here's the pass that we're we've been waiting for. This is the this is the last uh, uh, coat of the top of the wing, and uh, in just a couple minutes we'll be all through with this, and uh, we'll go clean the spray gun, and we'll be done with this wing.
clean the spray gun. Okay, we're all through spraying and we should have a little bit of paint left and uh, as we usually do. And so you just take an old container and take what's left of the, spray, uh, of the paint and just put it into a container. Pull the trigger, open the fluid control valve all the way open and just let that paint solidify and then once it's uh, hardened up you can just throw it away and it'd be, it's a, a non-hazardous waste that way and you're not putting it down the drain. Okay, to clean up the spray gun we'll just go over to the sink. We'll go ahead and take care of the mixing container first. We'll use just uh, lukewarm water works really good and it just rinses right out. If you let it set up you can't clean it with water. Once this paint starts to set up, it's just really not a whole lot you can do with it to clean it up. On the spray gun, what I like to do is pull the trigger and start the uh, put the put the container under the water and just let it start cleaning off the top part of it. Down in there, you can just see it dissolve the the paint that's stuck onto the pot. to take a little bit of scotch bright pad and just gently wipe the spray gun off that'll get rid of the residue that's uh, that's on it. There's usually a little bit around the nozzle. Clean, and we'll just take the tip off and make sure that it's nice and clean inside. And this is where I use a little bit of a wire brush down inside of it to make sure that we get all that paint residue out of down into it. Cleans it right up doing that and then flush the cavity out real good with water. Always like to pull the trigger when I put the tip in and out so we're not running the needle against the uh, hole in the tip. We'll lock it back down, put the cap back on it, Use a little bit of a wire brush here just to do the last little bit of the cleaning around down in the cavities that you can't get to. And for the final cleanup after I spray a, a large area like a wing or whatever, I'll put about two tablespoons of lacquer thinner down into it, take a rag and wipe or a paper towel and wipe the outside off, and that's all there is to clean a spray gun. We're done. We talked about the 10 minute window of painting between each coat and in some cases there's no way that you're going to be able to paint an entire part of an airplane in the 10 minute window. So what we've done is we've split that up and this fuselage is a very good example of that and we're going to show you how we do that to where you can paint part of it at one time, the first 10 minute session and then the final part on the next day. So if you take a look at this fuselage we painted the back half first and we came up and we picked out a, uh, a dividing line so we can mask it to where that will never show. So what we've done is the back of the window and around here is all painted 
and then where the overlap seam comes back from here down and then around here and then down underneath all that's painted and we put an overlap in the paint so this is so we're well past a couple inches past where we're going to mask and so we're going to put the tape on the low part of the seam to where the the tape will go against the front half and that way you will never see that and this is all nice and painted around the edge and we're going to do that in two steps uh, we're going to use a, a paper tape and we're going to use a fine line tape so we're going to just take just a minute and show you just a little bit of how to put that masking on there to where it won't show so to start with put the paper tape about an eighth of an inch uh, between an eighth and a quarter of an inch away from uh, where you want that masking line and what this is going to be is where you're going to tape the paper to it and it really makes it very easy to tape and the main thing it does is when you get ready when you when you're all through painting we want to get that masking tape off as quick as we can so you don't have a ridge anywhere it lets that paint just flow right on down and so by doing this you've got that thin line through here we're going to do just this upper section to where you can get a good uh, idea of exactly what we're doing from this point you would go ahead and put the paper on here and completely mask it back but you're still not masked up to the to the uh, to the line where you want your seam to show so once you get the paper on it come back with the blue fine line tape and put this tape this this is your this is your line now you want it right against that portion where you want that real pretty line to show and the reason that this works so well is that once you're masked let me go ahead and put another piece in and I'll show you what we're talking about here okay now once you're once you're completely masked and everything is done and you come back and you paint this front half you will blend it over and then you want this you don't want a sharp edge right here you want that to lay down really nice so what you'll do is come in and you just peel this blue right off right as soon as you're through painting up here and that way all the paper stays in place and you're not worried about getting paper into your new paint job then this can just sit until the next day or a few hours until this is dry then you can come in and peel the rest of the paper off and then you're ready to start putting your uh, stripes on so that's how you paint a large area in two separate stations you paint the one half find a very good div uh, dividing line to where you can mask it and you will never see that We're going to take a minute and talk about the preparation and what it takes to prepare uh, fiberglass and composite prior to painting. And what we have here is a fiberglass uh, wheel fairing that's gel coated and it also has some raw fiberglass down the seam so it's a very good example of either one, either raw fiberglass or the gel coated. And the thing that's uh, very important before you do anything on a, a fiberglass part that's raw or gel coated is that we got to be sure that we get all of the release agents cleaned off of and that's very important so before you do any sanding or anything else on this before you fill in the little voids or pinholes or whatever we're going to do a real good job of cleaning and make sure that all of that mold release is off of there and so what we're going to start with and this is one of the very few times that we'll, we, we will use lacquer thinner in, in, in our process so we'll get to that. I'm going to put on a set of nitro gloves because I don't want to get the lacquer thinner on my hands. It's a good idea also once you start on preparing any surfaces for painting, you want to be real careful that you keep fingerprints and things like that off of there. So you can wear your nitrile gloves as much as you want and by all means keep your hands nice and washed and clean once we get this part cleaner before we prime it. So we'll put these on. We're going to use uh, a cotton terry towel they work really good and these are in packages you can buy them at a, a lot of different stores and these are what we use for the wiping and blowing of uh, prior to top coat we use it for all of our cleaning process and it works quite well 
The next thing that we're going to use after the lacquer thinner is our heavy duty cleaner. And this is a non-butyl cleaner that's highly concentrated and we've got it in a little trigger spray bottle that's diluted about 10 parts of water to one part of the heavy duty cleaner. And then we're going to talk about the primer sealer that we're going to put on it and how to repair the uh, pinholes and the areas that need more filling than with the glazing putty. We're not going to actually spray it. What we're going to do is explain how we want it clean. The actual spraying is covered in other parts of the video. So let's go ahead and get started with the cleaning with the lacquer thinner. We're going to take a towel and we're just going to slightly dampen it. We don't need it really heavy or uh, wet. We don't want it dripping off of there. And we're going to clean this twice with the lacquer thinner and then we're going to come back and we're going to clean it with the heavy duty cleaner. So what you want to do is just make sure that you wipe every inch of this thing down thoroughly. You see what's on there. It looks like it's pretty clean. And that's what we don't want to grind down inside of that part. We're not sure of that, what all's just dirt or, and what part of it is the release agent. Okay, we're just going to wipe down this one side, but if we were to finish this up, we would do everything in its entirety. What we're going to do now is we're going to rotate this cloth and get a clean part because you don't want to keep grinding that stuff down in there. We're wanting to get as much of that release off as we can. So we keep using a clean part of the towel. We're going to go over it one more time. And this is just slightly dampened with lacquer uh, thinner. Okay, that looks pretty good. What we've done on this, and there's a good uh, pointer, we've taken a, just a very simple stand and put a little crossboard on it, and that works quite well for spinners or wheel fairings or anything else that's a small part, because the beauty of that is when it's up in the air like that and you get ready to paint it, you can get all portions of it, and you don't have it sitting on a table where you're not going to get a good paint job on it. Okay, we wiped that down twice with our lacquer thinner. We're going to wipe it down one time now with our heavy duty cleaner. And we'll just take and just gently spray that on there, just, just dampen it down. And that will do a real good job of doing the final cleaning on that prior to sanding. See that even with the lacquer thinner, we still got a little bit off there with the heavy duty cleaner and that's the reason we want to go back with that. The heavy duty cleaner is a very good cleaner and it takes a lot of stuff that uh, other solvents won't get off. Okay, when that's dry, We'll come back and we'll use our uh, 320 grit and we're going to use an open coat sandpaper. It says right on the back it's an open cut, oh, open coat free cut. And so what we're going to do is take the shine and give some tooth on this fiberglass for the primer to stick to. So we don't need to sand it real heavy because we're not trying to get any voids or any imperfections out. We're going to do the primer. We're going to put the primer on it. Then we're going to talk a little bit about how to prepare and get it ready to paint. So we're just going to sand a small area here to give you a, an idea of what we want for a base coat underneath that primer. You can see how that sandpaper easily cuts that off. And once that shine is off of that, then we're ready to put the primer on it.
Okay, that half is ready to prime, and what we're going to do is bring it around here and let you look at the top of it. This portion of the fiberglass over here is gel coated and probably is in really good shape to go ahead and prime it and just put the paint job on it. But the raw part of the fiberglass up through here is going to need some spatial attention. It's going to have pinholes and it's going to, it's rough enough to where it's going to have to have a little bit of body filler work put on it. And that's where we use the polyester uh, body filler and we'll, we'll put that on there after it's primered. And so all of the prep work that we're doing now is getting it ready to do the priming. So what we will do is come in and we will use our charcoal uh, E7525 primer sealer and we'll use that directly out of the container and we'll put a real good first coat on that, just a heavy one coat and let that dry and then we'll come back and we'll put the fillers right on that. We can sand it off and just, just lightly sand it and wipe and blow it really well and then put the fillers on it and then anything, any of the imperfections, you need to go ahead and do the body work on it then and fill it. Go back and prime it, and fill it and prime it as many times as you need to get this part as smooth as you want it. And at that time then, it's ready to do the final sanding, and you can uh, put the final primer coat on it, or you can come back and put the white primer sealer if you're going to paint it colors, reds, yellows, blues, or whatever, then you would finish it off with the white uh, 7510 primer sealer and then sand that and go to the top coat. And that's how you do a fiberglass uh, part, fiberglass and composite. The wing is ready to paint, so now we're going to come in and mix the paint and get ready to go out and, uh, and paint that wing. So what we want to talk about here is how we're going to mix the paint and what it takes to get it ready. We're going to start out with the Part A, which is our Insigni White. We have the catalyst, the distilled water, the paint mixing paddles, the mixing container, the scales, our paint filters, our respirator, our little calculator, the Tyvek suit, and we have a pen that we're going to write down uh, our weights. We're going to be mixing today by weight instead of volume and it's a way more precise way and it's much easier and faster means of mixing the Part A, the Catalyst, and the distilled water together. So we're going to start by mixing the Part A first. We always want to be sure that whenever we mix our paint that we always pre-stir the Part A before we mix the Catalyst to it. And so we want to do that. We we'll just gently stir it up and we want to be sure that we don't aerate the paint so if you use a power mixer or anything on it be very careful because if you aerate this paint you want to let it sit for a little while and let the bubbles get out of it it doesn't it doesn't like having the air bubbles in it prior to uh, uh, putting the catalyst in it so the part A is nice and mixed and so we're going to put the paint filler the little bit of paint on here is not going to hurt we're going to put it in the container over here and we're going to go ahead and start the the uh, the container or the the uh, scale and we're going to mix 26 ounces of paint so we need to convert that to grams and we're going to use 29 grams per ounce as a as a guideline that's a, a little bit more than an actual gram but we're going to use it because it's easy so on our calculator we're going to take the 26 ounces times the 29 grams and that comes up to 754 uh, grams that we're going to mix. So once you get your scale turned on, we need to uh, we need to zero it out for the container, and we need to get it into units of grams. So we've got it zeroed now. So we're going to go ahead and mix the 750 grams of Part A, and then we're going to show you how to uh, calculate the Part B catalyst and also the water. So we're going to go ahead and pour in about 750 grams. We're going to shoot for that. It doesn't really matter by weight what what that. Um, ends up being because we're going to divide that by 3.3 .3, and that's going to give us the amount of catalyst that we need to put in. This can be any number. It really doesn't make any difference and that's one of the nice things about mixing by weight. Okay, we're going to stop right there. Okay. 
this is the one measurement that's not critical because everything else will blend into this. This, this ended up at 767 grams of part A. It's very important that you write that down. So we're going to write down 767 grams. And we're going to divide that now, 767 on our calculator, and we're going to divide that by 3.3, and that's the uh, formula that equals the catalyst, and that's 234.4 grams. So we're going to put 234 grams. The scale doesn't go to tenths, so you round it off to the lowest denominator. In other words, instead of going to the 230, um, the 232.4, we're going to go to 232. So we're going to go ahead and put uh, the catalyst in there. We're going to stir that up, and then we'll come back and calculate the water that we're going to put in it. So we're going to zero this back out. We're back, we're still in the grams, so we're going to put in 232 grams of Part B catalyst. You need to kind of slow down when you get close because it's easy to go over on this. We always want to put in the catalyst first and then the water after it's thoroughly mixed. It's coming up on 232, there's 28. Okay, there's two, 232 grams, so be sure you keep the lid on the catalyst at all times. It doesn't like to have it, it doesn't like it if it gets moisture in it, it will ruin it. Okay, let's stir this up. It takes a couple minutes to get it to, to go together. When you first start mixing the catalyst and the part A together, it looks a little bit, tiny bit lumpy inside, and that will smooth out. And as soon as it's nice and smooth, be sure that you wipe the edges of the container because we want to be sure that all of that part A and that catalyst is thoroughly mixed together. So if you don't scrape it off of those edges, you're going to have some paint on there that's not catalyzed. So we want to be certain that everything in, all the paint in there is really mixed up. And scrape it off the bottom and just gently stir it back and forth. It's starting to get really nice and smooth and creamy now and that's what we're looking for. This paint, when the catalyst goes into the paint and it's ready to start adding the water, it gets real smooth and creamy and, and very shiny. Scrape it off that stick and be sure that everything is thoroughly mixed. Okay, that's what we want it to look like. You see in there that it's real smooth and very shiny. Okay, that's that's really well mixed now. So we're going to go ahead and, and put the distilled water in it. So we need to take the exact same part A that we divided by 3.3 for the catalyst. And we're going to take the 767. And we're going to divide that by... 2.75 and that is the amount of water that we want. Let me do that again. 767 divided by 2.75. Okay. We need 278 grams of water. We'll go ahead and write that down just because we, we don't lose track. If anything goes wrong, we always have that to look back on. So we're going to add 278 grams of water. It's a little bit more water than the catalyst. And that will give us the exact consistency that we need for painting. You don't have to use a viscosity cup. We're going to zero this back out. We're still in the grams. We're going to add 278 grams of water. Be real careful you don't trip your toe. Uh, this paint does not like to be over thin, and if, if you do over thin it, it does not give you as nice a paint job as it does at this consistency. Okay, now we want to just gently stir it up the same as we did with the uh, part B in there. It takes just a minute or two for the water to go in, and once it does, it's going to be a, the exact right viscosity uh, for spray painting. 
and that will end up about 21 seconds and that that's the the viscosity that we're looking for if this were being mixed by volume we would have to use the viscosity cup two or three times because there's no way that we would be able to get the exact amount of water in there volume is not close enough to just pour in an exact measure measurement uh, mixing containers for one are not accurate enough we really prefer the weight measure because it works so well and it gives you time to mix additional paint between the third and the fourth coats and we will come back at the end of the third coat on this wing that we're going to paint and we will mix up uh, a little bit more probably an additional 16 ounces or so will finish that wing for the first coat Okay, again, we need to scrape those edges really good and get, get that water really mixed in there. We don't want any thick spots on there. Okay, that's, that's nice and mixed up. We're going to put on our Tyvek suit and get our uh, respirator on and we're going to come back and we're going to go paint the wing. You want to get your paint uh, totally mixed. You want to get your mixing containers out. You need one for the part A, you need one for the part B, and you need one for the distilled water. In the paint, you need your paint filters, you need your spray gun, and prior to uh, mixing, we're going to take the spray gun out and we're going to put some water in it and we're going to test the spray pattern. That's very important that we do that. We're going to take our respirator, since we've uh, had it for some time and we've been spraying Ecofill and different things, with a two-part polyurethane paint it's very important that we have a really good respirator so we're going to change the cartridges out and put new charcoal canisters on it prior to the painting. We're going to put on our Tyvek suit. This paint is not hazardous but it will stick to you so I don't want uh, paint on my arm so I'm going to wear this uh, paper suit to protect the overspray from my skin. So we'll take this a step at a time. Everything has to be done prior to mixing the paint. Once you mix your paint then you don't want to do anything else but just uh, start spraying. So we'll take these one step at a time. First of all we're going to check the spray gun and see how it does. Okay the first thing we're going to do to make sure that we're ready is check our spray gun. So we're going to plug the air into it. We're going to open the fan control all the way open. We're going to shut the fluid control completely off. We're going to pull the trigger and set our airflow at 20 to 25 pounds. Okay, on our two-part polyurethane we have a 1.3 millimeter uh, spray nozzle installed and we're going to set on our initial uh, spraying, we're going to open this fluid control knob three quarters of a turn. That's where we'll put our first coat and we're going to, we have water in it so water will tell us if the spray pattern is what we want. So with water I have a nice full wide spray pattern. So our spray gun is good to go. We'll just take the water and go ahead and put it on the floor. We already have our floor wet down, so a little bit more water is not going to hurt a thing. Then we want to dry the water out. When we mix our paint up, we don't want any uh, water down in the bottom of it. So. Okay, our spray gun is ready to go and it's dried out. So now we'll go get our uh, respirator ready to go and then put on our Tyvek suit. On our charcoal uh, respirator, we're installing brand new uh, charcoal cartridges we want to make sure that the air that we breathe is nice and clean so if your respirator has any age at all be sure to replace the uh, charcoal rest, uh, canisters or replace your uh, mask altogether. We're going to put on our Tyvek suit next that keeps our arms covered and keeps the overspray off of us Then we're going to mix paint. The next step after we have our suit on is to get the paint mixed up. This is the part A of the two part polyurethane so we want to be sure that it's thoroughly stirred. And then we have three separate mixing containers and a large one. So today we're going to mix up 21 ounces of part A, 7 ounces of part B, and then we're going to put 5 ounces of distilled water. And we're going to put all those in here. You need to be sure that you have a mixing vat that's large enough for all three parts combined. Okay, we've dispensed and uh, pre-measured our 21 ounces of part A, our 7 ounces of part B, 
and our five ounces of water and we have our viscosity cup handy. So we're going to go ahead and pour our part A in. And then we're going to stage these mixing containers because 21 ounces will not paint the entire wing through the all uh, uh, two and a half cross coats. So we're going to stage everything. We're going to come back in at the end of the third coat and we're going to, make, we're going to mix some more paint. So everything will be nice and handy here because we don't want to spend a whole lot of time uh, remixing. So we're going to start with a little bit of agitation. We're going to start mixing this up and then we're going to put the catalyst right in it while we're stirring. And this will go from a thin body paint to a very thick. It takes a couple minutes to stir it together. And I like to see the paint uh, from the time it's the catalyst is mixed until the water is uh, in place and the viscosity set at 20 seconds. I like to have that all done in about five minutes. From the time you do this right now, we should be spray painting in about five minutes. Be sure that it's thoroughly stirred. It'll you can tell when it's uh, thoroughly mixed because it gets very shiny and creamy, and uh, you want to stir it until it does that. If it looks a little bit, a uh, uh, little rough texture, a little orange peely look to it, it's not thoroughly mixed with a catalyst. You can tell now that's that's ready to go right there. That's nice and mixed. It's very creamy and smooth. That's what we're looking for. Okay, we'll go ahead and put put the uh, water in. We're not going to put all the five ounces. We're going to put in just about uh, probably four ounces, and then we're going to check the viscosity. We don't want to get it too thin. The worst thing you can do is to over thin the paint and have the viscosity too light. We want 20 seconds. The first little bit of water that goes in takes a few minutes to stir it in, and after that, it goes right in, and uh, additional water mixes really quickly. Okay, that's nice and mixed. Now it's time to check viscosity. We're going to use the DuPont M50 viscosity cup. We'll totally submerge it into the paint. We'll get our uh, second hand on our watch out. We want 20 seconds uh, and we're going to time the full stream. So we're going to start right there. Here's five seconds. We're going to be a little heavy it looks like. And that's fine. We don't care if it takes two or three tries. To, we want to be sure that we're not too heavy or too light. 20 seconds is just right. Okay, there's 20 seconds and we still have quite a bit of paint in there. So we're going to go ahead and put the, the rest of the water in there. It's going to take the, the... We won't put it all in. It's real easy. Once it gets to a certain point, it doesn't take much water to, uh, to reduce it on down. Okay, we're ready to check it again. Let's see what we got. We'll start it right there. There's five, ten, there's fifteen seconds, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. And we're still flowing. We're just a little bit heavy yet. We're going to put just a little bit more in. So it looks like we had just about the right amount of water with the uh, with the five ounces with the seven ounces of catalyst is going to be really close to just right. We'll go ahead and stir that in. All right, we'll try this one more time. We should be pretty close this time. There's five, ten, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. 18, 19, 20, 21. We have 21 seconds.
Okay, our target was 20 seconds and it came in at 21 seconds and we're going to let it go at that. Our target is what we shoot for. Uh, 21 seconds is really good. I really don't want to see it go less than uh, 20. Occasionally you can go to 19, but let's shoot for 20 seconds and settle and be happy with 21. That's, that's right where we want it. We're going to use our paint filter. We're going to go ahead and pour the paint. At this time we'll pour it through the paint filter and right into the hopper. Our gun is already set, so as soon as we put this in, we're ready to start painting. Okay. We're going to put the we're going to put the container in the sink and let it go ahead and uh, just let a little bit of water flow over it to clean while we're spraying. When we come back at the end of our third coat, it'll be all cleaned up and ready. We'll just 